Welcome to Easy Anatomy. Uh, I'm going to uh, discuss with you today anatomy of cerebellum. I will start with a general anatomy. Uh, when you look at the anatomy of the cerebellum from outside, you look at it from superior surface and inferior surface. From the superior surface, it's hard to demarcate between right and left side of the cerebellum, except with the central body. This central body is called superior vermis, superior vermis, and from each side you can see the fissure this fissure is called primary fissure primary fissure then you have anterior notch and the posterior notch anterior notch and this one which is deeper is called posterior notch the superior vermis is, is, is made of several parts we don't have to, uh, to to memorize the name like the first part center lobule then common then declive then etc so until you reach it to the inferior surface so basically it's several parts here however it's it it, it is it look like a smooth when you look on the, uh, at the superior surface of the cerebellum, you might realize that it's hard to demarcate uh, uh, the, the central body from the right or left side. It's different from the inferior surface. The inferior surface, if you look at the inferior surface, again, anterior notch. And posterior notch. Then you will notice that there is deep depression here and the vermis is more observed okay and also it has several parts starting from the nodule then uvula nodule uvula and uh, pyramid etc and the tuper so basically also it has several parts down here so this is the inferior vermis inferior vermis and the inferior vermis here again is located inside deep groove this groove uh, like you can easily uh, see it and the, the inferior vermis is also will observe it okay then we will notice that there is another part coming from here from this nodule and it's like extended arm on each side and they end up with the hand like structure is like this this is producing this part together which you call it follicular nodular loop follicular nodular loop because this is nodule if you remember we said that this is nodule this is nodule and this is folliculus okay so we call it follicular nodular loop okay. however the primary fissure which is located in the upper surface divides the upper surface into anterior loop and the posterior loop and this posterior loop continue in the inferior surface this is the inferior surface okay as i mentioned this is inferior surface and this is superior so the posterior loop continue to the posterior until you reach to this posterolateral fissure here and the posterolateral fissure again separating this posterior loop again this is posterior loop upper and the lower surface so i like from you to notice that that the posterior loop extends from the upper surface to the lower surface until it reaches to this posterolateral fissure and which separates the posterior loop from the follicular nodular loop. So basically, I need from you to remember primary loop, 
sorry, uh, uh, anterior loop, anterior loop, posterior loop, then follicular nodular loop. Okay, then we have again superior vermis and viral vermis, vermis anterior notch, posterior notch. Then you have primary fissure and the posterior lateral fissure and the posterior lateral fissure. Okay, so how about blood supply of cerebellum? The blood supply of cerebellum, blood supply of cerebellum. blood supply coming through three arteries we call them cerebellar arteries one called the posterior inferior cerebella or pica posterior inferior cerebella and the other one anterior inferior cerebellar artery we call it ICA then superior cerebellar artery the superior cerebellar and anterior inferior cerebellar coming from basilar coming from basilar artery and the pica coming from vertebral artery okay then if you imagine that this is the cerebellum upper surface then you go down here to the inferior surface And if you remember, it form. This is the dorsal surface of the medulla, and superior velum. And here is the fourth ventricle. Okay, this is the medu medulla and the pons, or let's say stem for to be easy. Cerebellum forms the the roof of the force ventricle roof of the force ventricle so this is the, the upper surface superior surface and this is the inferior surface okay keep in mind that you have deep fissure here which is called primary fissure so this is the anterior loop this is the posterior loop until and here this is the posterolateral fissure then you have the follicular nodular loop here follicular nodular loop this is anterior loop posterior loop extend all the way like here then the artery supplying the upper surface supplied only by one artery the upper surface supplied by one artery which is superior cerebellar artery the lower surface supplied by two arteries the pica and ica the pica which is posterior inferior cerebellar and ica which is an anterior inferior cerebellar arteries okay so you have three arteries superior cerebellar artery supplying the upper surface and pica and the ICA, the pica, the posterior inferior cerebral, this is supplying the posterior part of the inferior surface and the anterior inferior cerebellar are supplying the anterior part of the inferior surface. Okay, we're done now with the general anatomy. We still have to remember important things that you have brain stem which is made of medulla correct and pons and then midbrain
these three parts of the brainstem medulla pons and the midbrain they are connected to the cerebellum cerebellum supposed to cover the upper surface cerebellum supposed to be on the upper surface okay you will find that each part of the brain stem connected connected to the cerebellum through peduncle so there is inferior cerebellar peduncle between pons and cerebellum there is middle superior peduncle between pons and cerebellum again inferior between medulla and cerebellum middle between pons and cerebellum then you have again superior cerebellar peduncle between midbrain and cerebellum okay so this is cerebellum so you have inferior cerebellum peduncle middle cerebellar peduncle then superior cerebellar peduncle okay so the function of this peduncle those are the exit and the entry of fibers to the cerebellum out and to cerebellum so basically you will find that either carrying information to cerebellum or bringing information from cerebellum okay so you need to pay attention that those are the way or the bridge between upper centers like cerebral cortex and also lower center like spinal cord and cerebellum so cerebellum is midway between cerebral cortex here okay and the spinal cord here so basically the way to connect cere cerebral cortex with the, with the spinal cord with the cerebellum those are the peduncles superior middle and inferior that's why the peduncles have what we call it afferent or efferent afferent bringing information to cerebellum or efferent taking information from cerebellum and this is what we're going to talk in the second part of this lecture so what is the function of cerebellum the function of cerebellum is going to be explained also and 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 like well understood if we know the connection how the cerebellum connected with the spinal cord or with uh, cerebral cortex so let us go and discuss the function of cerebellum function of cerebellum what are the function of cerebellum the function of cerebellum is very easy to remember the following first balance and the position balance and position so it's very important to maintain balance and the position okay second and that's why through like through its end but this happens through it's a connection connection with vestibular nuclei and spinal cord and spinal cord okay especially the proprioception and we'll discuss this second coordination of voluntary movement coordination of movement voluntary movement voluntary movement and the cerebellum coordinate the timing coordinate timing and the force 
and the force of different muscle group of different muscle groups so it, it, it is very important to coordinate the action of different muscles even if it's antagonistic muscles three motor learning motor learning learning special skills motor skills so that's why it is important in adapting and fine-toning motor programs adapting and fine tuning motor programs and this happened through connection with cerebral cortex cerebral cortex okay coordination spinal cord balance position spinal cord and vestibular nuclei finally there is a function which some it's sometime it's uh, underestimated and also forgotten which is cognitive function the cognitive function is more related to language and it is not well understood it is not yet well understood how cerebellum exactly is playing a role in this function so again just as a beginning and the introduction to the connection we need to keep in mind that balance coordination of movement voluntary movement and the motor learning and cognitive function okay so from here like i will stop in this uh, at this part and in the second part, I will start talking about the connection. Thank you.